I want to walk you through a complete example of doing a normalization into third normal form. I'm taking the example here from a different textbook that I've listed here at the bottom in case you want to look for more information. And I'm going to particular, in particular, I'm going to introduce um, a notation that these guys have uh, written about that makes the identification of uh, functional dependencies quite a lot more explicit and then gives you a, kind of some intuitive visual guidance as to how to split a relation into other relations to improve the structure of the relationships, so to get from lower normalizations to higher normal forms. The, uh, the data here is mine, but the format for it is the, the same format as used in the text. So what's shown here is basically just some information about some projects. So there's a project number, a project name for that project number, and then some employees that are working on that project. And listed here are their employee ID numbers, their name, and then their job classification, kind of their, their, uh, their role or rank. And that job classification impacts the amount of money that the company can charge for them to work on a project. And then we track the number of hours that are billed and then the total charge is just the hourly charge times the hours. And I've written this here, uh, or titled this as a report. It's not really a table. Uh, it's definitely not something that's in uh, first normal form because we have repeating groups. Each of these columns, except for the first two, has multiple values in it, which we know, of course, disqualifies this as a first normal form relation. So the first thing that we need to do is just convert this into first normal form. And that's pretty straightforward. We won't try to do any kind of decomposition at this point. We'll just rewrite it and duplicate basically the, the project number and the project name for each row. And we end up with this version. Uh, some things I've done here, uh, first of all, I've called this the assignments relation because now it really is a relation. It's in first normal form because there's only one value per cell or essentially one value per attribute per tuple. I've renamed the column headers here to make them a little bit more database-like. And I've also eliminated this total charge column. We know that if we have the number of hours that were billed and the total or the amount of money that we're charging per hour, we can calculate that total charge, so there's no point in storing it in a relation. So that column is basically gone, and then I've just duplicated the project number and employee number to add each, to add one to each of the, each of the rows in this, in this table, each of the tuples in this relation. Okay, so <clears throat> we're in first normal form. We know that we want to get to a higher normal forms, and I want to show you a strategy for identifying kind of the path that we're going to use to get from first normal form to third. Because we're using this notion of functional dependence diagrams from the textbook I just mentioned, I thought I'd just refresh your memory on some definitions here. And these are a little bit subtly different from what we've been using as the definitions of these terms, but they come from that textbook. The partial dependency, what they, what they refer to as a partial dependency, is still a functional dependence. But it's a dependence in which the determinant, or the left-hand side part of the dependency, the X that we've been talking about, is only part of a candidate key. Okay, So it's not the entirety of a candidate key, which means that the dependence is using attributes on the left-hand side that cannot be used to uniquely identify a row within the table. Uh, so what we're going to see is that we're going to look for partial dependencies in the, in the first normal form version of the data, and when we find those, that's going to be a signal that we need to break those dependencies as part of the process of going from first normal form to second normal form. Similarly, they define transitive dependencies, again, also a functional dependence, of course, but these are functional dependencies among non-prime attributes. So remember that a prime attribute is one that participates in some candidate key, and a non-prime attribute is one that isn't in any candidate key. So in a way, these transitive dependencies can be identified by sort of looking for, you know, little weird, weird dependencies in the data that aren't really tied to a key at all. And what we'll see is that just like we use partial dependencies to help us move from first normal form to second normal form, we'll use these transitive dependencies to move from second normal form to third. So again, similar to what we've talked about already, but spun a little bit differently to use this notion of uh, dependency diagrams. And this is for our first example of a de dependency diagram from this text. You can see here in the center are the list of all the attributes associated with the first normal form version of the table. We're still in first normal form. So we have a functional dependency on the key that we've identified, 
I should have pointed this out before, these two columns here at the beginning of the first normal form uh, relation, I've singled out as a composite key for this table. So it is a candidate key, and it's also, in, the, in this case, the primary key that I've chosen for this example. And you can see that um, because it contains the project number and the employee number, that taken together as a composite key, those two values are going to be able to uniquely identify every row in this table, every tuple in this in this relation and intuitively the uh, the notion that you're going to have a for, for each project you're going to have some number of employees um, is sufficient to, to capture the data that's in the rest of the relation uh, I guess there would be a possibility that you might have an employee assigned to a project in a different role or something like that with a different job class but this data doesn't reflect that possibility and we could just imagine that the business rule in this case was, one employee is assigned to one role within a single project. Um, that being the case, we can use these two attributes as the key for this relation. So back to this uh, relation diagram, we can see that the, the main functional dependency here is that the project number and the employee number are used to determine all the rest of the fields. So project name, employee name, job class, charge, and hours, right? All of these guys are dependent on these first two. And the way that the authors uh, show this graphically is with this kind of multi-headed arrow where the, there's two tails that come from the two things on the left-hand side of the, of the functional dependency. And then all the arrowheads associated with that, with that arrow are the dependencies on the right-hand side of the functional dependency. So it's just a nice visual way of seeing the relationship between the set of X attributes and the set of Y attributes in a functional dependency. Notice also that this functional dependency is shown above the list of attributes. What we're going to see is that the, uh, the diagram convention is to put partial and transitive dependencies below and just complete functional dependencies up above the diagram to make it really evident which are the dependencies that need to be dealt with to move to a higher normal form. Now given that then, we can also look through the list of attributes and try to identify partial dependencies. And again, partial dependencies have to be dependencies that don't, or that have a, a subset, a strict subset of the key on the left-hand side of the dependency. So the full key is project number and employee number, but we can also see that we have some dependencies that involve only one of those things. So from, from the project number, we can in, infer that we'll know the project name given the project number. So it logically determines or functionally determines the project name. And I've shown that here in the diagram, again, below the attribute list, that project number determines project name. And because, again, this dependency arrow is not using all of the fields in the key, I've marked it as a partial dependency. And similarly, the employee number would allow us to determine the employee name, the employee's job class, and the rate that they're being charged to customers. So I've got another uh, partial dependency arrow marked partial that goes from just employee number to those three attributes in the first normal form version of these, of these data. And then finally, I've got a transitive dependency. And remember, by the definition from this author, these are functional dependencies among non-prime attributes. And you can see that both job class and charge that are associated with this transitive dependency are not prime attributes, right? Because they're not part of any key that we're aware of at this point. So we can, but we can uh, intuit that for a given job class, a particular level within the, within the organization, right? We're seeing here that an engineer is being billed at 40 bucks an hour. Um, and that's consistent throughout this table, right? 40 bucks an hour here. And you can, you can look at this table if you want to verify that the, uh, the charges are always consistent with the job class. So it's not tied to the employee as such, it's tied to the, to the job class. Now we're intuiting that by looking at these data. Um, a better and more reliable way to determine that dependency would be to actually have a discussion with the organization and say, hey, how does job class and charge relate to each other? And they're going to be able to say, well, for this particular job class, no matter who the employee is in that class, we charge this many dollars. Um, if that was not the case, uh, this might just be sort of an accidental relationship between these two attributes, in which case we wouldn't think of this as a transitive dependency. We would just um, represent the charge for a particular employee for a particular, particular, a particular project.
But we're assuming here that job class does functionally determine charge. Okay, so that's our, our, our final functional dependency. Again, it's a transitive one because it relates non-key, uh, sorry, non-prime attributes together. So we've got a first normal form with the functional dependency that's shown here above. And the next step then is to get from first normal form to second normal form by eliminating partial dependencies. So that looks like this. Instead of having the assignment relation that had all these fields in it, we're basically going to get rid of all of the connections that are going on in this, in this relation except for the number of hours. So assignment, uh, we're saying that the, the combination of project number and employee number determines the number of hours that that employee put in on that project. Right? So that still seems to make some sense that we, we should have a functional dependency between that composite key and the number of hours. But these other partial dependencies are a clear signal that we should move these relationships out of the first normal form version into second normal form where we use the the set X, the determinant, as the key in a new relation and then bring along all of the other non-prime attributes to be part of that same relation. Similarly for employee, we're going to use the employee number as the new key and bring along these additional attributes as the remaining attributes in the relation. So project number uh, in the project number functionally determines the project name and we've created a new relation here called project that represents that relation. Notice that we can still reassemble rows that look like this by joining these other tables together, these other relations together. So I can still connect a particular project name by using its project number to the number of hours that I'm being built that I'm billing on for that particular project, right? Because these two values are still present. I've I've not lost the ability to reconstruct the data that's present in the original assignment relation, but now I've got a more highly normalized database that gives me that same capability without sacrificing all of the data redundancy issues that I want to try to avoid. Similarly for the employee, this is going to suggest a new relation with employee number as the key, and that's what I've shown here. I've got employee number, and then it functionally determines employee name, job class, and charge. Now I haven't, I haven't eliminated the transitive dependency between job class and charge yet, so in this second normal form version of the data model, I'm still carrying that along, right? I'm not eliminating those transitive relationships yet. I'm only worried about the ones that are partial dependencies in which the determinant is a subset of a candidate key. So at this point then, I'm in second normal form. I have no, re no remaining partial dependencies. I do still have one transitive dependency that I need to address in order to get to third normal form. So and we're going to do the, basically the same process again, except we're going to re remove this transitive dependency. So this suggests that I would break job class into its own relation that connects job class to charge, and also keep job class around so that I can reconstruct the original, the original uh, data that was shown in the, f in the first normal form. And that looks like this. So here's my new relation job. It's keyed from job class and there's a functional dependency to the charge that we, or that the company uh, levies for people that are in that job class. And we can figure out which charges that we wanna, we wanna make for a particular project because the job class is in a relationship with the employee relation, right? You could see this as a primary key for the job table and this would be a foreign key in the employee table that refers to the job class of the job. And because the employee number is something that I can join on with the assignment, I can connect together all of the information in this, this, and this relation to um, determine the amount of money I'm gonna charge this particular project based on the employees that are participating in it. And you'll notice that now in the final version of these relations, I have only functional dependencies above the, the list of attributes. So these are full functional dependencies that I want to keep around. I don't have any partial dependencies and I have no transitive dependencies either, which suggests that now I'm in third normal form. So I think this is a nice way of kind of representing visually the relationships between the attributes and I help in a, in a way to help you identify the functional dependencies. 
uh, and I recommend it to you as a, a strategy going forward as you're working through um, the problem of converting less normalized data into higher normal forms.